G'day folks. Well, I'm just going through the graveyard sorting out old condensing units and I figured I'd do a good video on inverters. And when I say inverter, I mean inverter-driven air conditioners. These two here are Dakins. I'll do a bit separate video on Fujitsu's. Uh, this is one of the fairly common ones that I get. Haven't seen many of these though. This is the first one with the full plastic front. Um, probably even got a horizontal compressor in it because I can't see where it lives. There's a big fan in there and that's about it. But it might also be tucked away in the corner back here. I'd say it's tucked in there. I did have one other weird one which had a horizontal compressor but the whole thing was crushed and buckled in the bottom so I ended up recovering and canning that one. Got quite a few other units to sort through at the moment. Got about 13 or 14 of them to dismantle. They've all been recovered responsibly and professionally. No refrigerant loss, it's all good. It's time to turn them into scrap because they're no good. Most of them are dead or just don't have matching units to go with them. Yeah, this one's a pre-inverter Dakin inside here. And that's all you got. Defrost and control board with fan speed relays, that sort of shit. Main contactor for the compressor. Run cap, that's about it. They're very straightforward. And just a standard rotary compressor, made by Siam Compressor Industries in Thailand. This one here is probably, according to that date, 1999 on that sticker. There's three of those ones there too, which are very similar. One, two and three. But they're also not inverter ones. The Fujitsu with a stuck reversing valve. All you hear is a hissing sound when it clicks in line tap on it. Suck all the gas out of them. More other junk. That one worked but the compressor oil was a burnt yellow colour and it smelt kind of funky so the compressor didn't have much time left in this world. I figured it's better to put it out of its misery. Okay I got the covers off both of them and you can immediately see there's a lot of electronics in them and they're not very well protected. This is the worst one too. It's got this plastic sheet over the top of it which is all warped from heat and other anomalies occurring. It's got a nice little diagram on it. These ones have been out of service for about 12 months so they're pretty safe to touch but if you've just been powering one up discharge these capacitors or it will kill you. Uh, first thing I can see is a lot of spider material there's an egg sack and a lot of dead baby spiders. The spider poop on burning through the traces. A lot of green oxide on the pins of these terminals. All these ICs and things. Um, yeah, this board has seen a lot of moisture. A lot of mould growing on top of the relays. Green oxide on the rectifier. And on the, uh, I think it's like an IGBT pack. A uh, bipolar transistor pack. Yeah, this is why I don't like inverter air conditioners because the boards are never sealed. Okay, they do need cooling to a degree, but you can put things on heat sinks. Like there'll be, yeah, there it is. There's a heat sink in there for the IGBT pack or whatever it is. And that's sealed. Like it's, you can put a gasket around that and make it hermetically sealed. The rest of the board, yeah, okay, it does need some cooling, but why not create a filter cartridge on this end? and just filter the air that goes through it. They make VFDs for aggressive environments pretty well. Danfoss make a lot of good VFDs for rather nasty and aggressive environments and they hold up quite well. But these things here are just underprotected. It's like they're designed to fail. Now this one came from a completely different location. It's also rusted out though. It's definitely a seaside unit. It's got a lot of corrosion on the coils, probably no more than eight years old. And again, we've got material lifting off the traces. We've got corrosion through the pins here on this processor I see. They're all bridged by crap. This thing would have been playing up like buggery. It would have been making some weird errors and shut down, start up, do change modes without warning. This board is just ruined. It's all in there, all this lacquer's peeling off. See, this one's been used down by the seaside, and if they can't make an inverter to withstand a salt air environment, then what are they supposed to do with them? Pretty much every new air conditioner is inverter driven now. 
I mean every one of them. Last time I was in uh, total line heating and cooling all their uh, carrier units had, it, had DC inverter printed on them. I would really hope they package them better than this because this is just bad. And this test points are all green and corroded. Getting into this uh, brick here, that's all corroded. The bottoms of the rectifier is, there's a, it's like, probably like a 15 or 20 amp rectifier in there which is all corroded up. But the worst part's all this micro circuitry because you can see the traces are just, the lacquer's peeling off the traces and whenever you get a droplet of moisture build up on it, it'll short it out. So unless this thing is warm all the time, it will start to condense and short out. It's been running heat a lot too, oh sorry, cool. See the copper's starting to oxidise. They run very high pressures and temperatures. So I'm guessing that's the problem with this one as well. Just the VFD can't handle the uh, environment. There's no gasket on the top cover. This end here just has a basic cover over the back of the casing and that's all open there. So there's air coming through these slots carrying moisture vapour and salt air from the seaside. And it's just trashed it. So these ones here can also go to the graveyard. Well, I'm going to pull them apart and get the coils out along with the other 12 or 13 units that I've got. They're also in pretty bad shape. So that should conclude that one. I hope you like to see inside them. They're basically a sine wave inverter. They don't convert back to alternating current. They put DC current into the compressor, which is hidden inside there. So that's the compressor main loom. You can unplug that and test your compressor anyway testing combinations and you should get all the same reading across the windings being a three phase should be something like 10 ohms or something like that across every possible combination and nothing going to ground got some good caps it's a 180 volt 75 mic 1999 so yeah it's made around 2099 400 volt 1500 Nippon Chemicon Nippon Chemicon's pretty good stuff too it's not bulging or damaged. This thing would have suffered the same problem. Strange electrical shorts. The bottoms of the pins on that little package there are all green and nasty. Forced operation switch. Yeah, nothing worth salvaging apart from the copper and the coils. Oh, I hope this gives you some uh, info on inverters and a good lesson. Never ever install one in an aggressive environment like by the sea. Wherever there's salt air, other nastiness, airborne material, don't do it. If it's a nice dry climate most of the year, fine. But if it's a warm, hot, humid and sometimes salty environment, forget about it. It'll be dead within four or five years even. These ones here lasted nine or ten years, which is pretty reasonable. But for a $3,000 air conditioning system, I'd want more than eight or nine years out of it, considering a lot of these old window shakers lasted 30 to 40 years in some cases. There's still a lot of air conditioners around that are 30 years old, at least. They've just got to build them simple again. Forget about this economy money-saving inverter crap, because it's not money-saving, it's not saving the environment either. Well, that's enough of that, and thanks for watching.